Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It is Monday. It means the start of the week for our expert series, and we always start off hot. We have the legend, Greg Dickerson, with us. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How are you today? I'm doing well. It's hard to believe. We are actually going to talk about something that you and I haven't hit before, and we've done 100 hours together, uh, and that is the U.S. dollar, right? We talk interest rates. We talk 10-year. We talk Fed, but we've never talked the dollar. I actually believe the dollar is about to be front and center as we kind of get through this economic experiment of shutting an economy and then reopening it. And I thought we should talk about that. Um, any first thoughts when I say U.S. dollar? Yeah. So, you know, the dollar is king, right? It's king dollar. It's the world's reserve currency. And you know, I get a lot of flack for that. People tell me I'm old school yeah. and, you know, this, that and the other. And, and uh, that the dollar is losing its reserve status. It's losing its value exponentially. And, uh, you know, people have been saying that forever. And, you know, the bottom line is the United States is the most, and I have people all around the world that I work with and that follow me and, and, mm -hmm. and they know, they, and they, they are the ones that tell me the United States is the most stable economy in the world, the most stable government in the world, regardless of what side you're on. We went through some challenges recently and we saw mm -hmm. that democracy will prevail yeah. regardless of what your beliefs are and where you think we really are. But this is the only place in the world where, like you see in China, they're not going to come just take your stuff, shut you down and lock you up or you kill know, you not sure <laughs> or kill you. And yeah. sure, we had we had some uh, regulations with the pandemic. Some people agreed with some didn't. But what's going on now? We're open back up. Nobody's making you wear a mask at scale. Certain areas where you still have to do it. Nobody's forcing you to get vaccinated. You know, those types of things. So we still live in a free country. We have a free uh, enterprise driven economy that's based on supply and demand and entrepreneurship, the American dream. So those are the things that the world sees and says, you know, if everything else is melting away, where is the safest place to be? And that's one of the things when I say the dollar is a safe haven, a lot of people misunderstand that in terms of, of you know, what I'm really talking about, but it really is the only true safe haven in the world right now. If everything else is failing, everybody wants to be in the dollar. Yeah, for me, again, I don't normally track the dollar. I'm not a currency player, Forex, any of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, what do I watch? I watch the consumer. And mm -hmm. really on the consumer, I'm going, around, is the consumer fearful or greedy? It's, it's really that kind of scale. But here's the deal. When the consumer gets scary or scared, the dollar gets stronger. Why? Because you, as an investor, you're going to be in assets, your risk profile or your risk appetite, you're going to be in other things. But I got, I've been through it several times. When you get scared, what do you do? You go to the dollar, you sell stocks, you sell your crypto, you may even sell real estate. You, um, you just get out, you go to King dollar, right? And the dollar will spike higher. And now that we have a, a Fed that is going from ultra dovish, and again, just like our episode one with real estate, the, the Fed is on a continuum going from ultra dovish to more hawkish, which will mean higher rates. And the dollar will benefit from that, you know, over the yeah. long term. And these aren't just opinions or guessing. This is no. go look at the charts, you know, yeah. you can go look at the dollar chart and you can put it uh, against all of the markets in recessionary times when the markets are down, the dollar's up today. The dollar was skyrocketing. Now the market's uh, you know, up and down today. It opened mm -hmm. with a boom, which it always does after a big sell-off and then who knows how it's going to end in the afternoon, but we are yeah. in a correction. Analysts are calling for anywhere between 10 and 20%. It's time. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that Powell said last week that a lot of people missed when you read between the lines was wall street, take your profits. Yeah. How's the time. So, you know, the, the shot was fired across the bow. So that's what's going on. You know, everybody in the, in the markets understand what Powell was saying and now Bullard coming out and, and, you know, all the different things. They're basically saying it's time to take your profits. The party's over. We're not gonna we're not gonna pull the rug out from under you because that's not good for anybody. But mm. you better start taking your profits, and you better start doing what you need to do before we have to do it for you. So that was the message that was sent. Yeah. And when that happens, the dollar shoots up because what do people do? They sell into the dollar. And again, I work with um, so I work with institutions, family offices, high net worth individuals, entrepreneurs, real estate investors, about all over the world, yeah. everywhere, India, China. Um, Korea, uh, Europe, uh, Australia, you know, Canada. Wow. When in this environment, they're all going to cash, all of them. Yeah. And that, I mean, you and I talked last week about Jamie Dimon's move to the cash. They had half a billion folks say that again, that's half a trillion dollars and building. Mm -hmm. uh, 
people are going to the dollar, right? And, and, and go ahead. And why is that? Because as assets deflate, dollar inflates, and we can talk about inflation, deflation, what that really is, you know, the dollar gains value as assets deflate. So you can buy more of them when they go on sale. Mm -hmm. That's why people go to the dollar, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, and I mean, there's different currencies and things like that. But at the end of the day, um, governments around the world hold more of the dollar than anything else on their balance sheet, besides real estate in some countries. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting, right? I don't normally think about the dollar, except to know that when, for me, it's all about catching cycles. Right. right. I've been, I've, I've, I've rode the real estate cycle. It's easier to see, right. As we just did in episode one, there are variables that can tell you when a market transitions from ultra seller uh, to even to buyer. Right. Uh, I can't tell you what's going to happen in any second or minute in, in Forex, which is, is, is currency trading or, or crypto. Not my thing. I don't want to watch. I don't want to be glued to my screen, but I can watch indicators. And I think mm-hmm. the dollar is something that's going to be worth following the rest of the year. Because it, for me, it's a fear gauge. It's it's simple. It's that simple, right? The dollar, I don't think, is going to lose the recurve, reserve currency in the next decade or two. Um, it's maybe not even in my lifetime. There's no other replacement for it. But again, the dollar is always an indicator about how fearful folks are, especially as we go from ultra dovish, you know, the Fed put all of these things. Don't bet against the Fed. To hey, the Fed's telling me to get out, and I and where do you go? The dollar. Exactly. Now, we might get outpaced from a GDP standpoint by China or some other country, Mm -hmm. but we are the only free country where you don't have to worry about your assets being seized and uh, the United States is going to come take you over and and all your stuff. It just isn't going to happen. And it hasn't happened. And, and, you know, we are a free country. We're a free economy. We're a free democracy. And that's why it's the safe haven. The other thing that's misunderstood is um, what inflation really is. A lot of people Mm. think inflation is the dollar getting weaker. And that's really not what the case is. What inflation is, is prices going up. So depending on where the dollar stands at the time, it may not go as far because prices have gone up. And then a lot of people think by printing currency and putting it into circulation, that weakens the dollar. When in fact, what that does is it inflates assets. So it's not the dollar getting weaker necessarily, it's assets inflating and deflating. So that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. And the government is not going to let it get out of control as we've seen. Mm -hmm. Um, And depending on how inflation really looks when we get open, some of it's going to be transitory. We do know that. Yeah, But a lot of it's not. The real question is, what's that delta? And once we open back up or on the other side and there are no more excuses, you know, then we'll see what happens. But Powell sent a message, look, y'all need to do this before we have to do it for you. So that's what's happening. Uh, Markets are deflating, assets are deflating, stuff selling off all across the board. Interest rates will go up to help curtail some of that. So that's going to, you know, deflate the housing market, slow that down, bring it back into a normal um, correction, normal pace. And then we'll go through that cycle again of, a little bit slower economic growth, things like that. And then, you know, who knows what'll happen, you know, other than a market accident, mm-hmm. meaning another black swan, uh, you know, it's just going to be that normal cycle of things. Yeah. Again, for, it's, it's so interesting um, as markets transition uh, the dollars, again, it is, it is the reserve currency of the world. It is, it's where people go when they're afraid. That's what it is for me. When, when you are scared, what do you do? You sell and you sit in dollar, which is always interesting because the people that sit in the dollar are the ones today saying the dollar is trash, right? the dollar is this, the dollar is that. It's like, well, where are you going to go, buddy? Uh, and it always ends up. Well, they the say that until, you know, things start breaking down. And what do they do? They sell their assets into the dollar. So, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Whoops. Where else can I go? It's an, yeah. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm, Again, it's not me. Just look at the data, look at the statistics, look at the charts, and you know that'll show you what we're talking about. It's yeah. got nothing to do with our opinion. It no. is what it is. It's fact. Yeah. And again, the dollar. You, you want to see the do- you want to see something go hyperbolic. I mean, check the dollar out uh, late last week. It, it went. Yeah. It's and spiked. again, look at the countries and what assets they hold on their balance sheets. That's public information. You can Google that. What country? How many countries own the dollar? And you'll mm-hmm. see that it's their largest reserve asset on their balance sheet. And I know there's a lot of talk about crypto and all that replacing dollar and all that. It's not going to happen. What's going to happen is what you're seeing in China. Countries are going to create their own digital currency Mm -hmm. so that it's easier easier to use around the world and create um, transaction um, 
continuity that will solve the issues of the inner banking relationships between countries that we have now that, that make it so difficult, mm -hmm. but nothing is going to come up and, you know, like Bitcoin or anything else and all of a sudden be a reserve currency for the world. It just isn't going to happen. Yeah. Very cool. Well, this is a lot of fun. I look forward to episode number three, where we're going to talk about if, if, if a stock market crash or correction happens, what will happen to real estate? I think that would be a fun conversation as well. But how can people get a hold of your world? Because you're doing amazing things, helping people, entrepreneurs, business folks around the world. Yeah, gregdickerson.com. Um, all of my podcast, YouTube channel, uh, social media channels are all on there, gregdickerson.com. Thanks, buddy.